Okay, when you guys get your mailing, you'll have a brand new 2020 National Electric Code Book, as well as a set of Easy Brand tabs. Start at the very back. If you notice, the index tab is in the front. If you read the information, it actually gives you some directions on what to do. Do not just stick these in sporadically. It says in the directions to find the index page. So you go toward the back of the book. The index is right here. You take the first tab off, the index tab. Take it off and you put it at the bottom of that page, right there. Put the black line against the edge of the page. Make it as straight as you can possibly. Then the next tab that's shown here is actually Annex D. You back up and you find Annex D. Find the very beginning of Annex D which is right here. This is where your line of sight comes in. You take the next tab and you line it up so you don't cover up the index tab. You just stuck in. And you go through this whole setup. And when you're done, it will look like this. And all these nice color tabs will help you identify where in the code you're gonna go. Once you get it all tabbed up, definitely suggest that you put your name across the edge on the outside because if you don't, it looks like just like any other code book. It'd be hard to define which one's yours and which one belongs to someone else. We're gonna understand how this book is laid out so that you can easily reference it. So in the very beginning of the code book, you got Article 90, and there's a nice little graphic here that talks about the code arrangement. The picture shows us that Chapter 1 is general. Chapter 2 is wiring and protection. Chapter three is wiring methods and materials. Chapter four is equipment for general use. The bracket tells us that those first four chapters apply generally to all electrical installations. Now I want you to use that thought pattern and we're gonna compare that to a job site format. I want you to take a blank piece of paper, hopefully you got a, just a piece of copy paper or a piece of notebook paper, whatever it is, turn it sideways. And what we're going to do is we're going to break down the different pieces of the National Air Code in a format that equals a job site atmosphere. So this blank piece of paper, we're going to divide it up into four pieces. The first, we're going to put a number one at the top left corner. About midway down on that same side, you put a number two. About center, across from the number one, you put a number three. And then across from number two, about center, you put a number four. We start this process, and I'm going to go to the board, and we'll draw that out. Now I've got the same idea that we put on the paper on the board. And we're going to relabel those first four chapters in this idea on the piece of paper. The first chapter one, we're going to call it safety. Chapter two, as we said, we're going to call it planning. Chapter three, the, this is the area that you're familiar with. This is when you're actually installing all the conduits and cables. We're going to call that the rough end section of the job. Then the last part is the trim out section. I'm going to subtitle this also Final Connections. So in the safety in the National Electric Code, you know, one of the first things, if you don't know what it is, you might be unsafe about it. So definitions of the different words that are used throughout the code, that's in the safety portion because if you don't, you know, like rain tight, weather proof, within sight of, it's kind of, it's kind of important what those words mean. Also in the safety will be working space. Working space about electrical equipment. If you don't have enough working space, you got problems. Then we've got dedicated space. That's dedicated space for our electrical equipment to live in so we don't have other foreign stuff in it. There's many different pieces and parts, but there's a lot of stuff in the National Electric Code that requires us to label, either field label or factory label, different things. So all the different labels that are required and how the format of those labels are, are in the safety. In planning, chapter two, uh, you know, we can't even think about the rough in or the trim out until we know, first and foremost, how many circuits we need, what size those circuits are, what size feeder required to make those branch circuits happen, and what size service is required 
to equal all the feeders and the load that's required for a typical building. One of the things about planning though, it kind of has some identification in it as well. So our first part of this is identification of what we call the neutral conductor. That's a very important identification because if we've got the wrong color on that, somebody terminates in the wrong place or somebody grabs it or touches it, it could be a bad thing. Uh, then we get into branch circuits. Lots of information about branch circuits. There's some branch circuits that are actually required based on the, uh, you know, the occupancy we're talking about. And then sizing those circuits and then also with the branch circuits we've got receptacle layout. And that layout is mainly for dwelling units and then in recent times uh, some of the commercial areas where we have to have so many receptacles laid out and those receptacles have to be served by branch circuits based on the size. Then we get into feeders. Well feeders goes to our distribution equipment and takes care of the needs of the branch circuits. One leads into the other. And once we know how many feeders that is required for the branch circuits, we get into services. The services, that's how we size the total load to take care of the feeders and the feeders take care of the branch circuits on and on, so just a cycle. Once we understand what size service we need, then we have to build a grounding electrode system. So grounding is in here in chapter two. But it's more than just grounding. When we talk about grounding, we also have bonding. And later on, we'll talk about the difference between grounding and bonding because people are so confused about that uh, because in our trade, we say the word ground and means everything on the job. But in the National Electric Code, there's actually different definitions. Again, definition, safety definitions of what ground is versus grounding versus grounded versus ungrounding, ungrounded, and then bonding is a whole different subject. So we'll get into that in a later subject matter, but planning, we this is basically what for most of Amtec's work, an engineer has taken all this into consideration, created a set of plans for us. That's in planning. Now chapter three we label that rough in, and that is the one that you're going to be so familiar with. Every day on a job, you're touching and dealing with chapter three more than most likely. You're putting in all the different raceways, all the different cables, setting the boxes, terminations in the boxes, all that. So rough in starts out like this. <clears throat> we get into how deep does the ditch need to be for whatever it is, whether it's cable or conduit, whether it's PVC or rigid, uh, underground uh, cover requirements. Now that is not a ditch depth as much as it is how much cover needs to be on top of the different conduits or cables. And then the most famous one is uh, the impasti tables. In this four year time period, you will be officially trained how to use the impasti tables. That's sizing your conductors for the different impasties. After the impasti tables, we get into boxes. Sizing those correctly based on what their use is, whether it's for a device or a splice or an angle or a pull that's in chapter three. Sizing those boxes correctly and mounting those boxes correctly. After that, we get into all the different raceways or cables. When I say raceways, I'm talking about your typical conduits. But I'm also talking about cable trays, wire troughs, all the different raceways and all the different cables. Now we're going to get into chapter four, which we call trim out. And all the different pieces and parts at the end of the job when the drywall is on, the paint's on, you're putting in the receptacle switches, you're putting in the lights in the ceiling, you're making the final connections to all the different parts and pieces like the panels, transformers, HVAC equipment, appliances, chapter four. So the last part of the job, when you're making the final connection, that means you, you're touching whatever it is for the last time. You put a box in a wall, chapter three. You run a cable to that box, chapter three. You run a conduit for that home run, chapter three. You pull wire through the raceway, chapter three. When the drywall's on and you're putting the receptacle in the box, putting the faceplate on, chapter four. So let's run through all the different pieces and parts in chapter four. You got cords. Cords, such as like SO cord, that's a final connection. You put a cord in, at the last piece. You don't put a cord in during the roughing stage or during the planning stage or during the safety stage. You put a cord in. That gives you flexibility for like some of the light fixtures have cords. Some of the motors have cords. You put cords in. Then you get switches and receptacles. After that you go into panels. You know everybody likes to make those panels all nice and pretty. Make the final connections. Then you get into light fixtures. 
We call them light fixtures in the old days. In the National Electric Code, they're called luminaires. But on our, in our field, we'll, the older guys will all, always call them light fixtures. Uh, the National Electric Code will call them luminaires. After that, we've got some bigger stuff like appliances. Again, once appliances are set, you make a final connection to them, you're done. And we got uh, transformers, we got motors, we got HVAC equipment. In essence, this is the code. In the back of the National Electric Code, there's plenty of blank pages. Do this roughly on your piece of paper, and then transfer it nicely into the, one of the blank pages in the National Electric Code in the back 